In the world of men, we have to decide what is real and what is not real. What is real that we live in America, the land of the home of the free. Now, does that make sense to you? Home of the brave, land of the free, all the things that we sing about with freedom ringing around us. But does freedom ring for everyone, or is it just ringing for some people? Are only some people allowed to succeed in life and other people are not allowed to succeed at all? Or do we have interests in other people that we should not have at all? In life, we have moments of time to see the paths in life that God plans for us. Sometimes it's an instant with a stranger that you go, I don't know what just happened to me, but I need to sit the fuck down. And what you realize is that God is showing you the possibilities in life. Other times God says to you, stay away from that. Don't go near those people. And you have to be willing to listen to that. We know from the biblical sources that most people as Christianity has emerged in our nation are familiar with. The book of John, the Good Shepherd, in which the shepherd leads this flock. We have to do that in every area of life. If we are a leader, then we are responsible for those we lead. We are responsible for caring for them, we are responsible for doing things for them, and we are, we are responsible for the things we should be doing. What I am saying is that in the function of men, in the function of women, we have rights to be ourselves. We have rights to be what God has planned for us. We have rights to do things that God wants us to do, and we have rights to decide that God knows best for us. There are arrogant people that want to be in control of the streets. There are arrogant people that want to be in control of communities. There are arrogant people that want to be in control of cities and nations. Now, are they arrogant or are they leaders? You see, the arrogant spew rhetoric. Leaders provide service. The arrogant want power. Leaders show humility. We recently were honored by the Queen of England, a woman who's, I think, pushing near 90. And our president, Joe Biden, was invited to spend time with her. What an amazing honor for America. If you're a moron, you didn't get it. Intelligent people know how important that was for America. It showed that we have succeeded in some way to regain some regard from that nation. It also allowed our president to talk with the leader of that nation, and that was a good visit. What you've seen is something that I was sort of articulating to someone I really care about in their administration, that it's really important to pick the top 12 nations of the world that are vital to America's success. It's really important that over the next 12 months, we take time to meet those leaders, spend time with them, invite them here, go there, and encourage both countries in partnership and peace. You see, it's the major players of the world that set the stage for our lives. But in our day-to-day -day aspect of living, we don't think much about politics, do we? We don't think about how voting is so important, except it's still going on, this issue where politicians of the religious right want to do all sorts of crap to us, and you're like, you already screwed us about out of the election. You made it so fucking late that now everything's off track. That was a Trumpism, and that was an attack, but it also allowed us to see who does who and what do we do. You see, in life we have moments of time to do what is right. And when we don't do what is right, we lose the right of our world. In life we have to know what is and isn't okay. And we have to know that today.